Hello, I'd like to take just a few minutes to explain the heat release rate calculator that we have here. This uses t squared functions to predict the initial delay, growth, steady state, and decay phase of a fire um, and help you get input data uh, that you can use in FDS to represent a fire of this uh, type. And so there's a few input parameters. We have the peak heat release rate that you're interested in. Um, if there's an initial delay, this could be zero if you want to, it'll still work. Um, but how many seconds before the growth starts and then your growth rate, um, your peak duration, so how long does it stay at peak, and then the decay rate or the rate uh, on this decay side of the phase. Um, there are also some parameters here. These are optional simplification parameters, um, and that's how many points or segments that you want um, in the growth and the decay phase uh, to, to extract from the raw data. So these these uh, first three columns are raw. Um, this is time in seconds. The normalized value, which is essentially your heat release rate over your um, peak heat release rate. So it's kind of the fraction of your uh, peak heat release rate. And then the heat release rate value itself at that point in time. Um, and then the simplified, it's the same time, the normalized, and the heat release rate uh, for the simplification or the simplified data set. Um, so you'll see some things here, these growth points, you can modify these. So you can say, um, actually, I want five points in the curve and click to calculate and it'll update that and give you those additional points. Um, and you can see here, because we have an initial delay, uh, the first, um, and we can kind of see it over here. So the first uh, 10 seconds um, are essentially at zero and then it'll start to grow from that 10 second forward. Um, as it goes and we get that same thing here so from zero to nine seconds it's at zero and then from nine seconds essentially forward it starts the growth um, and we get our one two three four five um, points here and then the fifth one here would have overshot uh, the next one i guess the sixth point would have overshot so we kind of clip to the peak so we we do compute um, kind of look back look ahead and then if the next point would be greater than our peak, then we um, kind of go back by a, a second uh, or, or clip that at that time at 140 um, and set it to the peaky release rate. So there's a little bit of clipping on that side. And then we just use the same starting point here uh, for the decay side. So we'll take a look at that. We have our one, two, three, four, five. And then if the next point would overshoot zero and be in negative, so to speak, then we just clip it at zero. And so you'll see a zero time here. Sometimes some numbers can give you a little bit of a funky, like an extra zero line. So in that case, um, I would just copy down to the first zero, copy that and paste it. But most of the time, depending on the numbers you pick in here, let's try eight and recalculate. You know, we can get eight points here. And one of the nice things too is that I'm uh, computing the raw data um, value in, in uh, megajoules. So the total heat released uh, according to the raw curve uh, with all the detail every second. And then uh, computing the same heat release using the points of the simplified curve. So you can see here there's a little bit of a difference that the simplified over predicts the raw curve by about 118 kilojoules in this case. Um, so remember that's in kilojoules, not megajoules. Um, and then, uh, and these values are in megajoules. So let's take a look then if we set this to something really low like two um, and we calculate. Now we're over predicting in the simplified, you can see here that it's over predicting the heat release rate um, by, by 2.1 megajoules or 2000 kilojoules here. So um, the more points that you provide, um, the more resolved the simplification is to the curve. Now, you could put in the, uh, if you put in for the growth points and the decay points, the exact same number of growth and decay points, you would get the same same value out at the end. So, um, but then you might as well just use your raw data and very few people wanna copy, you know, a couple hundred, uh, 300 or whatever data points into a table in Pyrosim. So it's better just to grab the simplified data knowing that you have a little bit of an overprediction and maybe you have some tolerance. You could say, okay, I want to go, let's see when it gets close enough, right? So maybe I need, uh, let's try eight points each, double that. Okay, now I'm down to 118 kilojoules. That's okay, overprediction. And then um, maybe a conservative overprediction of the heat. Um, and then copy these. And so you get a lot less, right? Um, 
So hopefully this is pretty helpful. You can also copy these. Uh, we just put in these standard alpha values as a few references. So if you want to change your curve, let's say, or change any of these values, let's try that. Let's do an ultra fast growth. And we'll just paste that uh, with the value. And then we'll do a slow decay. So let's put that into the decay rate here, values. And uh, let's change our peak here. We're just going to go to 100 to kind of reduce the number of data. And let's change the initial delay to five seconds. Um, and we'll have a peak for uh, 20. So you, this is how you just modify these, calculate the curve. And here we have that ultra fast growth, the sustain, and then the long decay. And you'll have the, the data points there. Now, um, this just does the. This doesn't really compare like how well you're resolving the growth or the decay phase. It's just sort of a total energy uh, resolution. So um, this might be something that you want to play with a bit, these growth points, um, to get to kind of the smallest number of data points that you want that well enough resolve your total heat uh, output. So anyway, hopefully this is uh, helpful for you. If you, um, I, I left the code available here. You can go into the developer mode and uh, check out the macros. So these are all just kind of back here. If we go edit um, HRR calc, let me bring this over. Um, so, you know, just kind of, uh, I won't say I'm any kind of like VBA uh, guru. So if you see anything in here that's a little funky, there's probably some comments in here. I might clean this up a little bit um, and get rid of some things uh, before. Uh, before I excuse me, put this out publicly, but um, you know, you can kind of walk through and see what I'm doing for each step along the way. If you have any recommendations or advice on how to do this better, um, I look forward to that information. Hope you have a great day. Take care.